problem and think real fast. Now, I want, to, I want you guys to imagine yourself as a soldier. You're there with your squad, you're on the battlefield, you're ready for combat. And then all of a sudden, boom! There's an explosion. What was that? It was a bomb. You, you have half of your men on the floor, you don't know what to do, you're very vulnerable. Now, our project is trying to avoid situations like these. In our presentation, we will be talking about the design of our bomb sniffing robot, which will include the hardware, the software, and the security. We will also be talking about designs that led us to our final design decision that included which Wi-Fi, should we use Wi-Fi or should we use 802.15. We also <coughs> thought about using a remote control with an LCD screen for the user to use, or should we use a laptop graphical user interface. We will also be discussing risks that we will be facing in the future, such as cost, testing, and legal, legal issues. <coughs> Lastly, we will conclude and then I will open the floor to questions. Now, you might be asking, what exactly is the bomb? Well, it is a, it is a non-autonomous remote control vehicle that will use multi-sensor arrays to detect bombs. And users will include military or civilian bomb squads. Now, why is this important? Well, according to BBC, in Baghdad from 2003 to 2007, over 35,000 people died because of incidents like now our goal is to reduce this by creating this robot that will be able to detect bombs so that the user can do what is necessary to avoid situations like these and hopefully save lives. And we plan on implementing our robot by the end of May 2011. Now you might be wondering, how are we going to do this? And I'm going to pass that question to Sheree. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate that. All right, so what does our hardware include? Uh, hardware is really important because this is how the user interacts with the entire system. But really, you should think of it as two separate subsystems. The first subsystem is the GUI, and the second one will be the robot. And the controller is just connected to the GUI, so it's actually part of the uh, GUI subsystem. But uh, what we're looking for here is <coughs> a user puts inputs into the, can the controller, that's sent to the GUI, and then the Wi-Fi sends all that <coughs> back and forth that's pulling in the camera as well as the uh, bomb detection information. So that is chemicals as well as, uh, well, GPS and stuff like that because you need to know exactly where this is because you're going to be a really long distance away from uh, what you're looking for. So uh, this is how the... All right, so let's start with the controller. The controller is simple. It's just a PS3 controller. It's very intuitive. It's a game-like uh, system. And this gives you uh, three degrees of freedom on the controller, or sorry, for the camera. And it gives you uh, two degrees of freedom for the robot. So intuitively, you're going to want to move with this, that's the track. And you're going to want to change the speed with this. And then the next option is a uh, camera. So you can view what's going on. So the camera, you're going to move up and down, left and right, pan, tilt, etc. And then you're going to want to zoom in and out. So it's a lot like Halo, um, and the training should be relatively simple for that implementation. And we found a really cool uh, <coughs> article of patents, actually, on using this type of control with uh, robots. And we'll talk more about the software later. Uh, here, and we'll go through that. So next, the GUI. The GUI is what brings everything together. It brings a, a graphical show uh, for each of the sensors, as well as you can export your data and do whatever you want to that uh, maybe it wasn't customized exactly how you wanted it to. Oh, as on top of that, the GUI brings a very custom customizable But anyways, as well as displays camera and sensor for user. So now uh, it sends everything through Wi-Fi, that's 802.11 NGB, and uh, that's bringing in all the sensor inputs and bringing back all the sensor inputs. The 
between the two, as shown in the beginning slide. And now let's talk about the mechanics. So mechanics is pretty important. We don't have a lot of mechanical engineers, but we've done enough research that can help pull this information together uh, and be able to successfully design it. So the first thing is, is that if we want to build this, this is from uh, Linux Motion, if we want to build this, this whole system costs about $500. Uh, but instead, we can just buy the track, and that will give, that's only like $100. So we can make this with our own materials uh, at a machine shop or whatever, and uh, make sure that it's lightweight and the correct size that we want to uh, have it, so it would be easy to tote around, because soldiers are going to be carrying this thing around. So you don't want something that's really uh, hard to move, hard to carry, and it needs to be about the size of you know, your back. So. Uh, and then on top of that, a differential driver. <coughs> and all that really means is that in these tracks here, there are uh, gears and motors, or sorry, well, yes, gears attached to motors. So that makes everything drive and you have more control over the turning radius and more torque and all that uh, wonderfulness. So uh, the power, <laughs> the power uh, will be 7.2 to 12 volts DC. Uh, this is important because we need to uh, move everything and we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna need enough power to supply to the camera as well as the motors, as well as uh, all the sensors pulling the data and the Wi-Fi transmitting it back and forth. Now, uh, the sensors. Uh, once it's on the robot, you're going to need to pull in these sensors. These sensors include GPS, so you can know where you are and what you're detecting at that spot. And then you're going to have a camera uh, to see where you are, and uh, which is fed back to the user on the GUI. And then you're going to have bomb detection sensors, which include uh, LPG, which is petroleum, and what was the other one? Uh, it was propane and butane. Okay, propane and butane. And uh, carbon monoxide, methane, and radiation, which is the Geiger counter. We're actually building our own Geiger counter. Uh, so it'll be a really interesting project for us. And uh, the materials for the Geiger tube is about 90 bucks, but it's still feasible to me. And it'll be a fun little project. Uh, now I'm going to trans uh, give the security and go to software. As with any strong embedded systems project, there's hardware and software both integrated, so that's the same thing with our project. So the software aspect, there's two modules that she talked about earlier. Um, there's a, uh, the PC and the user interface, the computers, and then interface to the robot that's out there in the field, right? And then um, there's a controller that the user is going to be using. So just something like this again. Um, we're gonna have the motor control for the car, the movement and the speed of it and the direction of it, along with the uh, control of the camera. So you'll have the X, Y axis, 360 degrees rotation, and the Z axis. Um, so that's how that's going to work. And then what, what's going to happen is the controller is going to send an analog signal to the, uh, the user interface on the computer. And then we're going to have some kind of analog to digital conversion going on there so that we can get the digital data so that we can transmit it over to the robot telling, what the, ro telling the robot what to do. So we'll have functions such as get speed and get direction. And then we'll have the data transmit over to the robot. And then over here, we're also going to have, in between this link right here, which is the data transmit and the receive data, we're going to implement a uh, method to check for errors and to make sure that what we're getting is our data. So that we'll put a string of F, say, in, the, in front of the data before we send it off. So that in the receiver end, you can check for that string of F so that you can make sure that the next bit next bytes are our data. So that also in, in, increases security for the device so that somebody else can't come into our system and figure out that, hey, you know, this is their data, but the only we know what the front parts of the data is actually. And so after receiving the data, we'll have two other, two same functions calling get speed and get direction. They'll break the data into its components for the car's speed and direction. And then we'll go on some kind of lookup table that'll figure out on, depending on what the previous state our uh, robot was at, and then 
depending on the input that the user provided, we will output onto the robot that direction, that speed, and that camera tilt, that camera pan, etc. Um, also, the robot is going to have a lot of things, for instance, video and sensor array, which is the primary thing about our project that makes it important. And so we're going to call it modular functions called get video and get sensor that will receive the that will send the video in over back to the controller on the GUI interface right here. And so that one will there's two functions that will happen there which will be displaying that video data and displaying that sensor data so that the user can actually analyze the data on the computer right then. So these are some of the uh, functions so that I talked about earlier. <coughs> the move robot can always be taken the speed and direction. So no, that's what I talked about earlier. And then the move camera up, down, left, right. Um, transmit sensor data. You're going to have the GPS, the LPG again, that's going to help us detect bombs. Uh, carbon monoxide and methane and Geiger counter values. For carbon monoxide, it's going to be more of a homemade bomb so that we can cover a vast range of bombs because we don't want to only detect for nuclear radiation because there's a lot of things that go on in Baghdad that are based off of homemade bombs as well. And then we're also going to implement the CRC error check, which I talked about earlier, for security reasons and for accuracy of our robot. Um, and then next, we will talk about the security and alternatives. Okay, so you may be wondering, um, you know, this is going to be used for government. How do you make it secure? How do you make uh, that someone else can't access your packets or access your data? So what I looked into was uh, web versus all the other uh, security, network security uh, ideas. And it turns out that the government uh, restricts the use of web, and they want only uh, WPA. And the reason for this is because they have a really strong uh, encryption algorithm called AES that stands for Automated Encryption Security or something like that. And um, what this does is uh, it, it four layer security. It goes through the first layer, then the second layer, the third, the fourth. And then finally, it uh, has several headers for each of the layers that it goes through. And then it puts everything in a nice, pretty format at the end with the message, which is encrypted four times. And uh, yeah, this is the best one to use. What they mandate to use, and this is what we're going to use for our Wi-Fi. And the next thing is, uh, we mentioned that we have alternative designs, and one of those was our Wi-Fi. Uh, we were considering using a personal area network versus Wi-Fi, and a personal area personal area network uses kind of a handshaking type method between sending information back and forth. And the problem with this is. Well, we're going to be using a laptop anyways, so it already has Wi-Fi on it. We would have to add extra hardware. We'd have to do all this other stuff. But uh, yeah, let's forget all of that. Let's get us a larger market. Let's have a larger range. Let's have more data transmission rate at one time, so we can have larger packets. And there's more signal coding techniques. So overall, Wi-Fi was the way we need to go because our customers are going to be you know, controlling it from long distances, and we need that to be, we need larger transmission because we've got a lot of video data. So, uh, overall happiness versus sadness. <laughs> All right, so now, Sal, can you talk about our thing at home? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, another alternative design was whether to have uh, our robot semi autonomous or have it fully controllable by the user. Um, the reason why we wanted it, wanted it to be uh, semi-autonomous is because if it were to go out of range of <coughs> our Wi-Fi, we would need uh, for it to come back somehow. So uh, what we decided to go with originally was when it goes out of range, it would store 